I'm Dr. Vivek Man Singh, like the person who introduced me said. I am a global leader, I am an entrepreneur, I am an innovator, and I am an author. I have had the opportunity to work with stalwarts of technology leaders across the world. Some of them are David Packard and Ray Hewlett, who started HP, Michael Dell, who started Dell, John Chambers of Cisco, and then none other than Steve Jobs of Apple. I have learned a lot from these leaders, and I would like to share some with you. All right. So, the topic of my talk is achieving meaningful success. Unleash the power of me. Why am I talking about meaningful success? Is success not good enough? Here is the data. Across the world, multiple studies have been done on people who are seemingly successful. And when they are asked the question, do you consider yourself successful, many of them say no. In a study at Harvard University, Professor Clayton followed an MBA class. After five years of graduation, he went and met all in the alumni team. Everyone was happy, doing great, good jobs, good spouses, good cars, good houses. Everything was hunky dory On the 10th reunion of the same class, one third of the people did not show up. Why? They were having relationship issues, they were having health issues, and other problems. On the 25th reunion of the same class, half the people did not show up because they were having serious health issues, serious relationship issues, and other issues. And actually, many of them had ended up in jail for unethical practices. These seemingly successful people, such smart people, why do they do this? What is the reason for that? And that is where meaningful success comes in. What happened is, these people focused way too much on professional success. But the other half of the coin is well-being success, which includes things like health, relationship, spirituality, giving back, and other things. So I have come up with a system I call just one second. All right. I have come up with a system I call Wheel of Goals. The top half is professional success, goals, and the bottom half are well-being goals. So you lead a balanced life. That is why meaning success, meaningful success is important. Now, the first step, when you decide to do this, the first step is capturing your aspirations. How do you capture your aspirations? Most Indians who have lived in a very constrained life have hard time thinking big. This is a big challenge. How do you encourage people to think big? Let me give you two examples. Bollywood star Dilip Kumar was selling fruits in Bombay. He didn't aspire to have the largest fruit store in Bombay. He aspired to become an actor, he did. Mahendra Singh Dhoni, more recently, was ticket collector in railways. He didn't aspire to become a station master. He aspired to play cricket for India, and he did. This is what aspiration is. Many times when I mentor people and people can't think big enough, I actually ask them if the God comes to you. God is in front of you and say, ask. What do you ask? That is how you have to think about your aspiration and capture it in all aspects of life that I described to you earlier, both on the professional side and also on the uh, well-being side. Now, Bill Gates Proof talked about, Steve Jobs, you talked about, they could think so big in very, very early stage. But why is that missing in India? And that is actually the part of discussion going forward. Now, once you have captured your goals, once you have captured your aspirations as goals, the next thing is to use power of passion. All the successful people I have worked in the world with, they all are very passionate about their goals. 
common thing is passion. Why? Well, let me explain you the power of passion. Passion is a science as well. See, our human brain works, has two parts. One that works in logic and the other one that works from emotion. Right? Now, we are mostly using the logical part of the brain because of our education and, and, and learnings. Actually, the other side, which triggers from emotion, is waiting. It's waiting for us to actually charge, but we are not charging it. Because it gets charged through emotion. But this is very powerful part, actually more powerful than the logical part. I can prove that to you in 30 seconds. All of you have cried in a movie, not because movie is bad, but because you got engaged in a movie. Have you not? Everyone is nodding. All of us have cried. What is happening? You know this is not real. You know the movie is going to end in 10 minutes. You are still crying because this part of the brain has not been But this learns the language of emotion, not logic. And that emotion is passion. People who are very successful are passionate and they charge this side of the brain. When both sides of the brain start working, you become Aham Brahmasmi. And the whole universe actually helps you achieve your goals. So capture your aspirations into goals, become passionate about your goals like there is no tomorrow. The next step is about becoming the best version of yourself. Mahendra Singh Dhoni did not sit and wait. He aspired to become a cricket player, but he was not waiting. He was working on his fitness, he was working on his game, he was working on his mindset. We all have to do that. We all have to become the best version of ourselves. The most simple way I can tell you is three pillars you need to work on. First pillar is excellence. All of us have to improve in the area of our core competence and become better and better and better. Anyone we know outside our friends and family, it is because they have achieved certain level of excellence. Amitabh Bachchan, Rahul Dravid, Lata Mangeshkar, closer to your uh, home, leading heart surgeon, leading lawyer, these are the people who have achieved certain level of excellence. We all need to achieve excellence in the area God has gifted us, area of our core competence. Now see the power of passion here too. It is said that you need to work for 10,000 hours to achieve certain level of excellence. Normally, this is five to seven years of work. But look, now what passion does to you. If you are passionate about these goals, you actually are thinking and working on it 24-7. 24-7. You have read about Rahul Dravid. When he would get up at night to go to bathroom, he would actually practice his strokes. What is he doing? He's playing cricket all the time. When you do this 24-7, how long does it take you to complete 10,000 hours? A year and a half. In five years, you have accumulated experience of 15, 20 years. And that is when you read on a newspaper 14-year-old wins grandmaster in chess. It's not an accident. You read that 16-year-old girl has invented something new. This is not an accident. These people have achieved that level of excellence. So all of us, God has gifted us, us with one thing with, in which we are good at. We need to take that and build that pillar to a stronger and stronger side. So build excellence. Absolutely. The second thing is, Think out of the box. You can also call it innovation. I'm an innovator myself. Innovation has no way in that word itself. In no vision. No way is made into that. When you say no way to the obvious solution that you come up with, innovation is born. You need to all innovate. Anything can be improved all the time. No matter what you are doing. If you are an accountant, maybe the accounting process can be improved. If you are a surgeon, maybe surgery process can be improved. Anything that you do can be improved and can be challenged. The status quo should be challenged every day. And that is the second pillar you have to build, which is 
thinking out of the box or innovation. The third pillar is leadership. And when I say leadership, people start thinking about somebody as a leader. I'm not talking about them. I think we are all leaders. What do leaders do? Leaders have clear vision. Leaders develop skills to deliver on that vision. Leaders are liked and trusted. Leaders work hard and deliver the results. Don't we all need that? That is what leadership is all about. Not becoming a leader, leading yourself. And that is leadership. So I think it's very important that we practice that. Now, let me give you a story from my life that will capture all the things that I have said. At the age 30, I finished my PhD. I was working in California, Bay Area. I was working for age 20. I gave myself a goal. See the power of goal now. I'm going to walk you through this complete journey. At the age 30, I said, I am at the age 40, I want to be financially independent. And I decided the criteria of becoming financially independent. Now, the goal is set. How will, am I going to do that? I was uh, new in California. I didn't have any money to do a startup. I didn't have any other one job I had to keep. I was a single learning person in my family. But then I became very passionate and obsessed with this goal that I have to make it happen. Now see the magic of passion. Slowly the ideas started coming. Why can't I do this? Why can't I do this? And finally the idea that came up, it says that if I can invent something, on the weekends and evenings, I can license it and actually become financially independent. Right? And that is exactly what happened. Within a year, year and a half, I invented an instrument, licensed it to a Boston company, and became financially independent. This is the power of code. This is the power of passion. This is the power of thinking out of the box. This is the power of excellence, and this is the power of now, I was so passionate about this idea that at night I'll get ideas and I will not go to sleep in the fear of forgetting those ideas. How many of you are actually thinking about your goals with that level of passion? That is the key. So I think it's very important that I have used it in my life myself. Now, I have talked about the professional side of it. Let me talk about one goal which should be part of everyone's well-being goals. And health is obvious, you know that, so I'm not going to talk about health, spirituality and other things. But one goal I want to cover which is giving back. You give back to move forward. Understand that, right? Giving back keeps us grounded. Giving back helps us earn respect in our own eyes and in the eyes of others. But there are two problems most people face when they think about giving back or charity. I don't like the word charity, but I like the word giving back. What are the two issues? One, I finish all my obligations and then I will give something to other people. Right? And they never end. So you, the time keeps passing. And the second thing is that you, I give very small part of what actually I can. So small that, that's my charity word I don't like. It's like diksha. It should be giving back, not diksha. So these two problems you have to overcome. Now what you do is, in the newspapers you read, Azim Premji gave $5 billion, Bill Gates gave $50 billion, and you start thinking that, okay, people who are big, who have hundreds of billions of dollars, they can give 10, 20 billion dollars, and that is actually giving back. There is no harm in what they are doing that should be respected and appreciated. But let me tell you an incident from the life of Mr. Narayan Murthy. That I call giving back. Narayan Murthy was eight brothers and sisters. His father was a school teacher and mother was a homemaker. Ten people, ten mouths to feed every day in the salary of a school teacher. But every day they invited from their village a child who was less fortunate to eat with them. That is giving back. Giving back whatever you have, sharing that whatever you have at any level that you have, that is giving back. 
and power of giving back is phenomenal. Look at what Narayan Murthy has become, right? So that is giving back and we need to give all the time. If you can't give money, give time. Do something and give back. That is a very important part of the game. Now, in this journey, in this journey, there are four more gods that are ready to help you, but we never ask for their help. So one God you know, we all pray that God's blessings you need. But there are four more gods who can help you in this journey of achieving meaningful success. Who are these gods? These are inspirers, people who inspire you. You need to know that and learn something from them. Rahul Dravid is a friend and he is an inspirer of mine. Now I'm not a cricketer, but I can learn humbleness, I can learn humility, I can learn integrity, I can learn excellence, so many things I can learn. So find yourself some inspirers. When you inspire, you say that I admire this person, I have inspired this person, you are telling your brain that this is something you appreciate. By not appreciating people, you are actually hurting you, not them. Right? So inspirers is one. The second is role model. Everyone should have role model. Everyone should have role model because you are telling yourself that that is my destination. I want to be like this person. I want to be like them. Right? Third is a mentor. Everyone at any stage needs a mentor. No matter how successful you are, you can always do bigger and better things if you have the right mentor. Everyone. I still have. I have had 10 mentors in my life, starting from my mother and then my uncle and then my professor and so on. But I still have mentors who are helping me in my journey going forward. Everyone needs mentors. And then the books are important. And in the books I include things like this TED Talk. Learn, learn, learn because you need to learn all the time, every day. Now, all these ideas that I am sharing with you, I discussed with the 11 leaders in the world who I admire. And I interviewed them. Who are these people? These people are Ratan Tata, Narayan Murthy, Kiran Majumdar, John Chambers, Rahul Dravid, Prakash Padukone, Dr. Devi Shetty, Vinita Bali, Vali um, Kola, uh, Ramesh and Swati Ramana. 11 people I talk to. Half of them have Padmushan, half of them have Padmushan. These are the people. And they all, they all said and underline the message that I have shared with you. Aspire big, capture your goals, become the best version of yourself, and achieve and surprise yourself with what you can achieve. So in closing, in closing, I will use a quote of mine, which I use all the time, which is, future should not be decided by extrapolation of your past. Pay attention to this. You all are doing that to various degrees. Future should not be decided by extrapolation of your past. Future should be decided by aspirations of the future. <laughs> Think about it again. Future should not be decided by extrapolation of the past. Future should be decided by aspirations of the future. I have a very just recently a lawyer friend has become an entrepreneur, a doctor has become an art collector and a, a vintage car uh, collector. You can all at any stage aspire big and do something that you always wanted to do, but you don't have courage to make that happen. Right? So in the in the in closing, my message to you is. Aspire big. Aspire big. Achieve big. Give back to move forward and achieve meaningful success. May God bless you with meaningful success.